I'm going to show you how you can use Microsoft Loop Tables to get the most out of your data. Let's talk about it. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Let's Talk About IT. Today on the show, I want to talk about Microsoft Loop. Now, Microsoft Loop and the problem it's trying to actually solve is to enable users to get access to information that is up to date in the applications that they choose. Now, depending on the application support of Microsoft Loop, it enables you to ensure that if you update information in one location, that information is automatically updated in all the other locations. Some users may want to use Teams and chat. Some people may want to use email. The benefit of Loop is that that information can be embedded in one channel but then automatically updated in other channels. So it ensures that people choose the applications they want to use, but get the information which is most pertinent to the job they're doing at the time. Now, one component inside Loop, a very basic one it would seem, are tables. However, when I see people using tables inside Loop, they're using it in a very basic and fundamental way. Now, the table component is not super complicated, but there are some things you can actually do to help get more value out of what you're capturing inside those tables. So let's go and show you that inside a demo. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here in the Microsoft Loop application, which you can go and download from the Microsoft Store. You can also access this directly from the web at loop.microsoft.com, but nice to have an application you can work with. So we talked about tables. Let's add a table to our form here. And you can see here, fairly basic table. It's got some nice structure. Uh, I want to change the columns here. So let's call this uh, product. And then we'll go across and call this one count. Now, it would be nice for the loop document to kind of highlight the text in there when I tab across and edit it. But it doesn't, so you have to select it and type it in. Let's put in here uh, oranges. Let's do the whole. Uh, green grocer thing, oranges, apples, and bananas, and let's say 15 of those, let's say 14 of those, and we'll say, well, bananas are popular, so we've got three. Now, what I typically see people do at this point is they want some sort of totals column, and by default, what they will do is they'll add in another row, and they'll do the mathematical calculations themselves. So 15 plus 14, 29 plus three gives me 32. Okay, I've got my information, but the challenge here is now, if I were to go and sort this ascending, what you see here is I've sorted the information. However, it looks okay. Your total's still at the bottom, but remember, apple, bananas, oranges, and total, total is the last letter in the alphabet. If I were to now go and sort this by descending, it puts the total up the top. Now, while the number is still associated, it doesn't necessarily look like it makes sense here. So we can do this better. What I can do here is to delete this row and I'm gonna come over to count and in that little drop down arrow, I can change the column type to number. And this will warn me that this will convert the column and any rules associated with the column will be invalidated. We're okay, we're early on in. So we'll say, yes, let's proceed. And what you get at the bottom of this loop document now is a very handy sum feature. So I can see the total of all these numbers is 32. I can also look at what the average is. I can look at what the count is. So now I have a much more functional table. If I were to update this and change this to 13, and let's go back and say uh, we've got five oranges, we're able to see the information being updated as we work with this. And it also gives us the capability to have our sort ascending and sort descending and have this work really, really well. Now, what we can also do, which is quite interesting, is start to add filtering rules into our table as well. And this isn't exactly obvious, but if you come over to the top here where you've got these icons, there's this filter icon. And if I click on this, I can actually add filters to my table. So I can say, let's filter on count and let's filter on what products are less than or equal, well, let's say less than 10, right? Because after 10 or less than 10, I probably need to buy some more products. So I'll go ahead and hit apply. 
and now I can actually see oranges has less than 10 and I can just see that information there. I can then go ahead and clear that filter out. So now I'm able to filter the information and I'm not messing it up with that total column, it's still maintaining it separately. Now while we're here, there's some other things you can actually do with tables which are quite interesting as well. One of the things I can do is to export this to Excel. If I wanted to put it there, maybe do some further analysis. Probably not much analysis you would do on a three table, a three column table. However, you know, if the information is quite complicated, you can export it to Excel and that will export it and open up in an Excel file in the web. One thing that it doesn't bring across, unfortunately, is the totals. So it will export those three rows with the names, but it won't export the total column down the bottom, the summing, the average, and all those different things. It just exports the, the data. The other thing which I like about tables is some of the other uh, columns you can actually add to this. One that I like here is a column for voting. So if I change a column type and come down here to vote, I can add this capability to uh, add a column which is for voting. Now you might sort of say, well, why would I do this? Well, it's nice because it lets you see what people sort of think and how they might go in and vote. But bring this back to our filter capability, I can also use this in my filtering. So let's say, for example, bananas and, and I should say bananas, not banana, and oranges have one vote each. I can go and do my filter and say, show me on the popular where the votes were greater than, let's just say zero, and hit apply. And you can see it filtered out the column that wasn't popular. What I can also do is add another filter coming back to the filter before we said count less than 10. I might want to say, okay, I want to watch the products that are less than 10, which are popular. Because obviously if I'm running a business, I want to make sure those are filled up as well. So I can multi-layer the filtering capability. So count that is less than 10 and hit apply. And then you can actually see we have that filter just on oranges. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this video has been useful for you today to help you extract the full value out of some of the things you can do with Microsoft Loop and share information with other people. Please like and subscribe and give us the feedback so we can actually help to build better videos that help you be more productive in the workplace. Thanks.